And joining us on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line from Inside the Birds podcast, along with our friend Adam Kaplan, our good friend, friend of the show, Jeff Mosher. What's going on there, Mosh? Mark, how you doing, man? I having feel fantastic. I'm having a fantastic day. I think I might actually be having a better day uh, than Jalen Hurts, uh, <laughs> simply because uh, one of the great things people always say, oh, you're doing your own show. You have no boss. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I think I, I don't miss the office politics that happen in any corporate setting. Uh, radio is certainly not excluded from that. But um, when you have your boss in, in Howie Roseman do a press conference where he gets asked point blank how much confidence he has in you, and he starts talking about the offensive line, the running backs, the wide receivers, the tight ends, Zach Ertz, his age, everything but the amount of confidence he has in you, that really can't instill too much confidence in you if you're Jalen Hurts. Um, what was your take on that whole press conference? He might as well have been asked about the price of tea in China because the, <laughs> <laughs> the, his answer was about as, um, you know, to the point as, as you would expect Howie Roseman's answers to be at this point. And I will say this, that it sounds bad because it was relative to Jalen Hurts and the starting quarterback and everybody has that question in mind. And everybody knows, obviously, about the, including Jalen Hurts, about the backdrop of Deshaun Watson. But in all fairness, there were several questions at that press conference to both Howie and Nick Sirianni in which the intention was to get a specific answer. And what came back was a lot of what a circumlocution, which is just all over the map. Let's not, you know, if you had asked Howie and Nick if that, if it was Wednesday, you know, the day of the week was or yeah, Wednesday, they may have kind of told you that, well, it's the middle of the week. It depends on what calendar you're using. Is it Roman? Is it Greek? Is it really Wednesday? Is that just a, a label that we give a certain – you know what I'm saying? Like right, that, yeah. Every question <laughs> is like that. That's kind of typical of the first day of training camp. But That's I can understand a, yeah. if you can interpret the continued non – you know, um, declaration that Jalen Hurts is the starting quarterback now and forevermore. I'm, I'm, you're not going to get that. I mean, it's these these things about Deshaun Watson are, are are certainly true as far as interest, and and we have to let the wheels of justice sort of continue to spin there. But you know, I kind of understand where they're coming from. They're able to kind of set that ambiguous tone of competition at every point, well, having to declare anything specifically at a quarterback at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. And that's why I always applaud Doug Peterson for a guy that just had a horrible year of press conferences last year. <laughs> the whole Sam Bradford thing, he nailed as far as right now, our Sam Bradford's our starting quarterback, starting quarterback, right? He always worked in that phrase right now, whenever talking mm -hmm. about whether or not they were going to trade Sam Bradford, what they were going to do when they drafted uh, 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 Carson Wentz and all that. So I give him credit for that. So what's your take on this whole situation right now? Jeff Mosher inside the Burris podcast. Uh, when it comes to this Philadelphia Eagles team, who will be their starting quarterback week one? I still think it's going to be Jalen Hurts because I don't see the any other option other than Deshaun Watson, which it's hard as we sit here today with seemingly a story that comes out every week about accusers or where they're at. As far as the the legal process, it seems to be going slow. You know, Deshaun re reported to camp with Houston. I think they had him like being a mock safety at one point, which is what the Eagles used to do with their like third string quarterback. Yeah, you know, I remember AJ Feely used to be a, a a safety on the scout team all the time, and he didn't even have to run. He just it was like a look. So the and David Culley, by the way, who's the Texans head coach, was of course the Eagles wide receivers coach under Andy Reid. So probably a stolen concept there. Nonetheless, it's. It's either Jalen Hurts or somehow this Deshaun Watson thing may materialize. And what happens between now and then, Mark, I can't – I don't know. I think we're all in that, but we just don't know. I do think it's interesting that the the NFL did not put Deshaun Watson on a commissioner's list or an exempt list, which, right. as I interpret and I've seen reporting, means that they don't have enough right now to do that, which is interesting, you know, knowing yeah. that their, the accusations have been there and they, they've been looking into it. So – I don't know what that means. I, I have always been trying to figure out what the hell the exempt list is anyway. The commissioner's exempt list. I remember Greg Hardy was the first time I had ever heard about it. Uh, I think it was actually invented for him. I know other players yeah, have, have been on that list. And I'm st it's basically the – and I don't mean to downplay anything, but it's basically the NFL's naughty list. Like, all right, we're watching everything that's going on here with you legally before mm -hmm. we decide what to do. I will say this. The NFL, I remember having a conversation with Adam Schefter some years ago about the NFL and what they're doing with their investigations, and they at least seem to be doing the right thing in this. 
they're out of the investigation business. They're letting this go to the authorities, to, to legal counsel, civil trial, whatever it might be. They're looking at it from an outsider's perspective. They're not doing the investigation. So that might be why this is different than many other cases that we've seen where they're not getting nearly as involved. Well, I mean, guess not yet, right? I mean, they do right. have their council of, I guess, what they call independent investigators. I think Lisa Friel isn't part of, of that, if I may be getting the name wrong, where they have had people look into cases on their behalf, but are supposed to be kind of independent. I think that's how they did it with Zeke Elliott a couple yeah. of years ago as well. I mean, I still think at the end of the day, he's going to wind up uh, facing a suspension, right? Um, the question is, how long will it be? Is it going to be the six? Is it going to be down to four? Do they not have enough so that it only becomes two or three? I don't know. And if it's just two or three, do you trade for him with that, knowing that you got 13 or 14 games with him, then – a whole lot has to go. I, like I said, there's so much that has to come out between now and when that would happen to really know. Mm -hmm. No, I, I certainly hear you on that. Uh, as far as the other offensive spots here go for the Eagles, Zach Ertz being back with the Eagles and Howie Roseman saying he expects Zach Ertz to be on the team you know, with week in week one. This team, all of a sudden, if some young guys work out, could have a lot of weapons for whoever their quarterback's going to be. Uh, it's all coming down to Nick Sirianni and his offense. And I know you were down there at practice today for the first session of training camp and all that. Uh, anything jump out to you about uh, Nick Sirianni's first training camp session running the offense? Well, as it pertains to Zach Ertz, yeah. I mean, uh, he was out there. You know, obviously they were in shorts and shells for day one. We're not in pads here. Uh, I was very curious to see. I knew Zach was going to show up, but how much they use him, if they use him at all. He did get in there at times. Uh, there weren't a ton of reps for guys who play positions where there are other other spots. It's not like offensive line where you're playing every down, you know, right. tight ends, receivers, backs, they rotate. So it's not like I got a ton of rap, reps. But what I did notice, which I think is a little bit telltale, and obviously the real telltale sign is does he practice tomorrow, the next day? What about when pads come out? Uh, because my personal belief is nothing has changed as far as him wanting to be somewhere else and the Eagles wanting him to be somewhere else but getting value in return. So what's interesting for me to look at is, and I didn't see it today. I didn't. I tried to watch every rep as possible. I did not see a situation where Ertz and Dallas Goddard were on the field at the same time in the same formation. I saw 11 personnel with Ertz. I saw 11 personnel with Goddard. Now, if you were trying to sell the public on Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard are both going to be on this roster and they're both going to play and the the best of our abilities would be to put them on the field at the same time in 12 personnel like Doug Peterson used to do, then you would think there would be some plays with both of them on the field at the same time, but there were not. Now, day one, who knows? I'm just saying that if you're looking for any telltale signs, you're trying to play detective, I thought it was interesting that there was only 11 personnel uh, that I noticed on the field. Well, if their press conference, if their practices or anything like their press conferences, they ain't giving you nothing, Mosh. They ain't giving no, you nothing. Probably not. <laughs> uh, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, those guys. Uh, was Rager in sneakers today? Is that what I read? So that was really interesting. He came out uh, first. He didn't come out, and then he came out and started warming up with the team. And then as soon as they did more than warm ups, he left. So they said he had a, I, I forget how they diagnosed a lower leg injury. They said day to day. It's my understanding that it's very minor, that he might be back even the next day. So um, or today, perhaps. Um, and it's not a, it's it's more precautionary than anything. Uh, as far as Devontae Smith. It was not his best day. You were okay. hoping that the first round pick was going to show up, catch everything, you know, look like Terrell Owens and, uh, you know, really give the 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 whole the whole package. And, you know, he said it in his own press conference. He wasn't satisfied with his performance. He dropped a couple of balls, which is like not what he did at Alabama. And it, you know, his routes, he looked it didn't look like a, a clean, crisp separator on day one. Now it's day one. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. I do think that for kids like that, big time picks or who have a lot of um, pressure on them, you press a little bit on your day one. And then when you're, when you're thinking a lot, it tends to make you you know, look slower out there on the field. So uh, I'm not worried about it after day one. But uh, I will be honest with you. It was not It was not a very good practice for him. Nor I was would, it one for Jalen Hurts. I, I would – oh, okay. So Jalen Hurts wasn't, wasn't so sharp either? No, he, he was um, – look, he, th he threw – he tried to thread the needle a couple of times. They mostly did red zone stuff on day one. So he tried to thread the needle to gain well. At one point, got picked off by Josiah Scott. Uh, there was a play where he rolled to his left, uh, tried to kind of do a pretend tuck like he was going to run, 
then stopped and threw it to Devontae Smith in the left corner, and Darius Slay was all over it, broke it up. Um, he did throw a touchdown in the next play to Smith in the other corner. But overall, and I will say this and until I'm blue in the face, right, for the first – I've been doing this 15 years, right? The first five, six, seven days of trading camp practice, the defense is usually ahead of the offense because there's less timing, rhythm, syncopation things on defense than there are on offense. So it's not abnormal. I'm not slamming Hurts. I'm not slamming Smith. I'm just telling you what it was like on right. day one. I would expect nothing but honesty from you, Jeff Mosher, there as per usual. Uh, when can we catch the latest episode of uh, Inside the Birds podcast with you and Adam Kaplan? Yeah, you know, Wednesday morning, Monday. I'm sorry, Thursday morning, 6 a.m. We drop Monday and Thursdays, 6 a.m. So we'll have a, a recap of some of the you know things that have gone on with the Eagles over the last few days. And um, we'll be doing that throughout training camp. And probably when the season starts, we'll go back to our three-day, uh, three podcasts per week, I'm sorry, format. But right now, Monday, Monday Thursday, 6 a.m. All right, uh, last thing for you here, left tackle battle, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. Andre Diller, Jordan Mailata, uh, only one day in the books, but uh, who do you think is going to end up taking over that left tackle spot? I think it's going to be Jordan Mailata. I do. And look, anything can happen. Um, I thought he came into camp looking like he's in pretty good shape. It seemed like at the OTAs he may have you know, looked a little bit bigger than they wanted, but he certainly looked uh, the right size here in training camp. He did rotate on day one with Andre Dillard. You expect that they're going to do that. Uh, I just feel like the upside is a little higher. If this guy can be as much, you know, kind of add to his pass protection, he's already a mauler. He's already pretty good against the bull rushers. He's a massive human being. Whereas Andre Dillard has to show who who is has naturally great feet, good pass protector against the speed rushers. He's got to show he can hold up to the bull rushers. He's got to show he can be a punishing run blocker. It seems like he has more that he would have to show than Jordan Maialata at the moment. That's not to say he can't do it. Or he can't bridge the gap, but you're asking me today, so I'm telling you, I would think Jordan Mailata, it's his job to lose. Well, there you go. That's the uh, that's the that's the right now thing that you just worked in there. That Ray asked me today, today, right out to Jordan Mailata. Starting uh, left tackle. A lot of wiggle room. That's what we do. We talk with wiggle room. <laughs> um, I, I will say this. I I know I asked the question, who will be the starter week one? Uh, when it comes to who will start the majority of the games for the Eagles in the 2021 season, I'm I'm thinking it's I think I'm thinking it's Deshaun Watson over Joe Flacco over Jalen Hurts. Do you think that would be a safe assumption? It's it's so hard. I mean, yeah. okay, look, I'll I'll add to your if somehow he is cleared and mm -hmm. these uh, maybe some of the allegations come down. Maybe there's a settlement. There's a lot of talk about a settlement, right? Yes. And in within that talk of a settlement, there is a discussion or there's a, a point's been made by, I believe, Rusty Harden, the attorney for Deshaun, that he wants no NDAs. He wants to be able to disclose, which is the opposite. Usually you settle. You don't want anybody to know why you're settling or what the right. cash is. He wants that out there. If that winds up being true and happening, that there's a settlement where he gets to push his side of the story out there, unless these guys are the biggest idiots in the world, he and his <laughs> – in his lawyer, you would have to think that there's a reason and intent that their side of the story will show something different uh, or much less, I guess, uh, grueling as, 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 or egregious as what's being alleged. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case and there's really not a long suspension or it's a little, then you can see this all happening. Right. Uh -huh. But, that's a lot of if right there that I gave you. No, I got no, I got you. No, I, I, I thought the same exact thing, Moshe. I thought the same exact thing. Uh, make sure you guys catch the latest uh, podcast, of course, the latest episode of Inside the Birds podcast with Adam Kaplan and Jeff Mosher right here as the new episode drops at, uh, oh, it already did, 6 a.m. at the time we air this, my friend. Uh, Jeff Mosher, thank you so much, brother. Appreciate the insight. You got it, brother. Have a good uh, one. Absolutely. Not that you need it, but keep applying that suntan lotion when you're out there in the, uh, you know, the training camp, the beaten sun, and all that stuff. Yeah, I will try to avoid the media exempt list as well. You know, I, I like being back in good graces. <laughs> My man, Jeff Mosher, Inside the Birds podcast. Thanks, Mosh. See you, bud.